Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. President Trump releases his hit list dash all six served under Obama. As the bombshells keep dropping in the wake of the release of the FBI's heavily redacted FISA warrant application for Carter Page reveals almost as much as it conceals regarding the Obama administration, and none of it good. Fervent in their quest to make a case against what they viewed as the enemy, the Obama administration made a case to spy on a U.S. citizen and the Trump campaign, reducing their Fourth Amendment rights to little more than words on paper. As they continue to attempt to justify their heinous, illegal, and highly unethical actions, President Donald Trump is considering his own response and that of the nation to what has been revealed. At the White House press briefing, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders stated President Trump is considering revoking the security clearances from former intelligence officials who served under former President Barack Obama. Responding to a question about comments tweeted earlier in the day by Senator Rand Paul, RKY, that former CIA Director John Brennan should have his clearance stripped Sanders replied, reading from a prepared statement dash. Not only is the president looking to take away Brennan's security clearance, he's also looking into the clearances of Comey, Clapper, Hayden, Rice, and McCabe because they've politicized, and in some cases, monetized their public service and security clearances. Making baseless accusations of improper contact with Russia or being influenced by Russia, against the president, is extremely inappropriate. The fact that people with security clearances are making these baseless charges provides inappropriate legitimacy to accusations with zero evidence. The list of individuals facing the potential revocation of their security clearance features prominent critics from former President Barack Obama's administration who had access to top-secret intelligence information. According to Sanders, there is significant concern from the president and other members of his administration that these former officials are currently monetizing and politicizing their institutional knowledge from the country's top intelligence agencies. The current short list includes Dash. Black Square, former FBI Director James Comey. Black Square, former CIA Director John Brennan. Black Square, former Director of the National Security Agency Michael Hayden. Black Square, Former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper. Black Square, Former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. Black Square, Former National Security Advisor Susan Rice. Paul tweeted earlier the same day asking, Is John Brennan monetizing his security clearance? Is John Brennan making millions of dollars divulging secrets to the mainstream media with his attacks on it real Donald Trump? In a second and subsequent tweet, Paul stated his intentions to meet with the president to further discuss revoking Brennan's security clearance. After being fired by President Trump, leaking memos to the media via his friend and perjuring himself in congressional testimony, Comey is now traveling the country peddling his book, telling people to vote Democrat, just not Socialist Democrat. It was under Hayden's leadership that the NSA's massive metadata surveillance program was born which was done without a court order and an initial circumventing of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. FISC, in direct violation of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, FISA. This laid the groundwork for the surveillance to former Trump aide Carter Page and the Trump campaign. Clapper now works for CNN as a contributor. Also of import regarding Clapper, following a document leak in June 2013 detailing NSA practices of collecting telephone metadata on millions of Americans. Clapper was accused of perjury due to testimony earlier the same year stating the NSA does not collect any type of data on millions of Americans. McCabe was fired as deputy director of the FBI for unauthorized disclosures to the news media and lacking candor, including under oath, on multiple occasions, as well as his wife taking a significant amount in campaign contributions from Clinton proxy pal, Terry McAuliffe. Rice is noted for her lying in the aftermath of the Benghazi scandal peddling the fiction that the attack was caused by a YouTube video. She also was an instrumental part of the unmasking of various members of the Trump campaign on behalf of the Obama administration and she specifically requested that the NSA provide her with detailed spreadsheets of intercepted phone calls with unmasked Trump associates. Yet words like treason are being thrown around, with Brennan leading the pack screaming from the rooftops for President Trump's head on a platter merely for the crime of being elected in a country that loudly proclaims to be for the people, by the people. However, to Brennan that is clearly irrelevant as he tweeted of high crimes and misdemeanors in the wake of President Trump's press conference with Russian President Vladimir Putin following an approximately two-hour closed-door meeting between the two world leaders. It is important to note that it was Brennan specifically that from April 2016 to July 2016 that assembled a multi-agency task force that effectively turned the CIA into Hillary Clinton's own personal opposition research outfit.
During these months, Brennan was personally briefing former President Barack Obama as to the events taking place. As Kimberly Strassel of the Wall Street Journal so clearly notes Dash. The Trump Russia's Luthers have been back in the news, again giving Americans cause to doubt their claims of nonpartisanship. Last week it was Federal Bureau of Investigation agent Peter Strzok testifying to Congress that he harbored no bias against a president he still describes as horrible and disgusting. This week it was former FBI Director Jim Comey tweet lecturing Americans on their duty to vote Democratic in November. But the man who deserves a belated bit of scrutiny is former Central Intelligence Agency Director John Brennan. He's accused President Trump of venality, moral turpitude and political corruption, and berated GOP investigations of the FBI. This week he claimed on Twitter that Mr. Trump's press conference in Helsinki was nothing short of treasonous. This is rough stuff, even for an Obama partisan. That's what Mr. Brennan is, a partisan, and it is why his role in the 2016 scandal is in some ways more concerning than the FBI's. Mr. Comey stands accused of flouting the rules, breaking the chain of command, abusing investigatory powers. Yet it seems far likelier that the FBI's Trump investigation was a function of arrogance and overconfidence than some partisan plot. No such case can be made for Mr. Brennan. Before his nomination as CIA director, he served as a close Obama advisor. And the record shows he went on to use his position, as head of the most powerful spy agency in the world, to assist Hillary Clinton's campaign, and keep his job. Mr. Brennan has taken credit for launching the Trump investigation. At a House Intelligence Committee hearing in May 2017, he explained that he became aware of intelligence and information about contacts between Russian officials and U.S. persons. The CIA can investigate U.S. citizens, but he made sure that every information and bit of intelligence was shared with the Bureau, meaning the FBI. This information, he said, served as the basis for the FBI investigation. My sources suggest Mr. Brennan was overstating his initial role, but either way, by his own testimony, he was an Obama-Clinton partisan was pushing information to the FBI and pressuring it to act. More notable, Mr. Brennan then took the lead on shaping the narrative that Russia was interfering in the election specifically to help Mr. Trump, which quickly evolved into the Trump collusion narrative. Team Clinton was eager to make the claim, especially in light of the Democratic National Committee server hack. Numerous reports show Mr. Brennan aggressively pushing the same line internally. Their problem was that as of July 2016 even then Director of National Intelligence James Clapper didn't buy it. He publicly refused to say who was responsible for the hack, or ascribe motivation. Mr. Brennan also couldn't get the FBI to sign on to the view, the Bureau continued to believe Russian cyber attacks were aimed at disrupting the U.S. political system generally, not aiding Mr. Trump. The CIA director couldn't himself go public with his Clinton spin, he lacked the support of the intelligence community and had to be careful not to be seen interfering in U.S. politics. So what to do? He called Harry Reid. In a late August briefing, he told the Senate Minority Leader that Russia was trying to help Mr. Trump win the election and that Trump advisers might be colluding with Russia. Two years later, no public evidence has emerged to support such a claim. But the truth was irrelevant. On cue, within a few days of the briefing, Mr. Reid wrote a letter to Mr. Comey, which of course immediately became public. The evidence of a direct connection between the Russian government and Donald Trump's presidential campaign continues to mount, wrote Mr. Reid, going on to float Team Clinton's Russians are helping Trump theory. Mr. Reid publicly divulged at least one of the allegations contained in the infamous Steele dossier, insisting that the FBI use every resource available to investigate this matter. The Reid letter marked the first official blast of the Brennan Clinton collusion narrative into the open. Clinton opposition research firm Fusion GPS followed up by briefing its media allies about the dossier it had dropped off at the FBI. On September 23, Yahoo News's Michael Isakoff ran the headline, U.S. Intel officials probe ties between Trump advisor and Kremlin. Voila! Not only was the collusion narrative out there, but so was evidence that the FBI was investigating. In their recent book Russian Roulette, Mr. Isakoff and David Korn say even Mr. Reid believed Mr. Brennan had an ulterior motive with the briefing, and concluded the CIA chief believed the public needed to know about the Russia operation, including the information about the possible links to the Trump campaign. Brennan allies have denied his aim was to leak damaging information. Clinton supporters have a plausible case that Mr. Comey's late October announcement that the FBI had reopened its investigation into the candidate affected the election. But Trump supporters have a claim that the public outing of the collusion narrative and FBI investigation took a toll on their candidate. Strassel simply and succinctly concludes with this, politics was at the center of that outing, and Mr. Brandon was a ringmaster. 
remember that when reading his next trees and tweet. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.